my dear siblings and sisters and brothers in the Lord, God's peace to you. Coming to you again this Sunday morning from my dining room. Um, I wanted to be preaching a little bit closer to the Sunday um, these days than recording a week ahead of time. Plus, I've been dealing with some health stuff, so I just, you know, I'm laying low a little bit and trying to do some good self-care. And one way of doing proper self-care is to keep acquainting ourselves and growing deeper in our knowledge of God's Word. And today we're going to be reading the Great Commission, what Jesus sends us out with. It's also the institution of one of our sacraments, baptism, because the Lord has said it authoritatively and commanded us to do it. It is a sacrament, so we baptize children and believers into the family of God. So let's hear from Matthew 28, and I don't know why I listed verse 15 through 20. It's verse 16 through 20. So let's hear the words of the Lord. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> COVID's getting on my nerves. How about you? We all want to go back to church, but we got to stay inside still a little bit. We want to go out of our house and we want to go into the church and we want to gather together and we want to praise the Lord for crying out loud. It's time, isn't it? It's time for us to go and get on the move. Are you feeling it? I've been feeling this nudge to go because we've been cooped up so long. But then we read a passage like this and it says, go, go therefore. Or as like I heard it when I was growing up, it was therefore go ye into all the nations. And you might have grown up thinking about this passage as a command to go go off to foreign and distant lands. A friend of mine's trouble with Christianity is that if he were to become a Christian, wouldn't he have to leave his life and go to some distant land and be a missionary? Honestly, that was kind of how I thought of it coming up. We always go out with the good news. I grew up in a very evangelistic church. You go out, you go to your neighbors, you tell them that there is hope. You baptize them into the family of God in the name of the triune God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And you do it because Jesus lives, that Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. And so his commands are trustworthy. His teachings are true and trustworthy. Think of the commands that Jesus gave to his disciples. Love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. The two are like each other. The two are wrapped up into each other. Well, how do you do that? How do you go out there and love people? Especially these days, as we're prone to say, these days. How do you go out and, and run into these people who 
don't agree with you, who don't believe in the same things you believe, how do you go out there and love them? Well, Jesus said, this is the commandment I give to you. Love as I have loved. You go out and you love as I have loved. And how has Christ loved? Well, think of the scene where Jesus strips down and gets down on his knees and with a bowl and water takes the posture of a servant and washes the grime and animal waste off the feet of one in your presence. Now that word go, that's what we've kind of got to rearrange in our minds perhaps. Now maybe you have heard that when Jesus says go here, he's not saying, okay, purchase a plane ticket and go to a different place and live as a stranger preaching the gospel. It's as you go. You got to go somewhere. Jesus is going to ascend and they have a mission. So as they go, what they should be doing is baptizing, making disciples, teaching them to obey everything that Jesus commanded them, to love God, to love their neighbor, to love their neighbor from the posture of a servant willing to do the most menial tasks so that your neighbor, your loved one, your sibling in the Lord can be clean and welcomed and comfortable in the presence of God, God's very self. Because Jesus tells us here that he is with us even to the end of the age. When we go, we go with God. When you go through difficult rivers, I'm with you. You know this refrain. You know it by heart. I don't even have to say it to you anymore because you know it by heart. So when we go, we baptize. We bring people to that moment where they joyfully go down and have their old self die. And they come up raised to new life like Christ was raised to new life, clothed in the garments of Christ. You hear these things? I've been repeating them a lot. You go down in the water to die. You come up to live in Christ and you are protected by the garments of Christ because lo, I am with you even unto the end of the age. We make disciples by loving people when we go. We make disciples by teaching others to love. And we do this all in confidence because Christ is with us to the very end of the age. I want to go back to church. I mean, you feel that, right? You feel that desire. And we want to get back, we want to get back, we want to get back. But when we get back, when we go into church, finally, let's not forget that we've got to go right back out. And as we go, we got to think of creative ways. We've got to pray for confidence and courage and bold ways to spread the good news of the gospel in times like these. Because the world after COVID is going to be a place that all of us are being introduced to for the first time. A new normal will emerge. So as we go into that new normal, whatever that is and whenever that occurs, as you go, 
Baptize people in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Make disciples of people by teaching them everything Christ has commanded. And know that Christ is with you to the end of the age. When we go into church and reconnect and lift up our communal voices in praise to God, whether that is in song or just reading a psalm together. When we go and we, and we dine at the table of the Lord so that we are nourished to go out, let's remember, we are the light of the world because Jesus is risen. Jesus is risen indeed. And next week, we celebrate that Christ ascended into heaven and took his seat at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, and is Lord over heaven and earth. So let's take heart in God's promise that God is with us to the very end of the age. And know that when we go through difficult rivers, God is with us. When we walk through the fire, the flames will not set us ablaze. For Christ is our Lord, the Holy One of Israel, our Savior. So don't be afraid. He redeems you. He calls you by name. You belong to Jesus. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Let's pray. We thank you, Lord, that the command you gave us was one to love. And that every command after that builds on that command to love. So we pray, Holy Spirit, teach us to love. God, let us dive into your word and go out into your world and love the way you would have us. Guard us all the way and give us rest when we need it and help our joy to be catching. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.